Koya, and this is my generator. Now, I bought this generator uh, a couple months ago when we were having some power outages, and as you might suspect, we've had exactly zero power outages since then. So it has come in great use in preventing any power outages from happening ever again. But when I got this, I decided I wanted to get some heavy 10 gauge, you know, 30 amp, extension cord so I didn't burn my house down when I, you know, go ahead and never use it because the power is never going to go out again. And that meant that I was going to have to plug into a 30 amp outlet on this generator. A lot of the higher wattage generators will have these uh, high current uh, outputs here and this one is a 120 volt 30 amp uh, outlet. Now it uses what is known as a TT30 uh, plug and socket. Now this is a travel trailer socket. It has these two sort of angly bits here in the ground. And I can't remember which one of these is hot and which is neutral, but we'll figure it out as we go along. And these are designed as, you know, as it even applies for travel trailers. And one of the things that I think was a design constraint in this is that when you roll into a you know, RV park or something, you plug your travel trailer in, crank up the air conditioning, turn on the TV, do whatever. You have your fun for your weekend, your long weekend, you roll away, you forget to unplug this thing. So, these come out really, really easily. It's like you plug it in, and you know, it feels sort of secure, but honestly, just the weight of the, of the cord will often, you know, cause it to start to pull out and remove itself. Now, it comes out without damage, which is great for the RV park operator and your travel trailer, but it's not so great when it's like a generator and I'm trying to keep my fridge frozen. So, that's not great. Now, the other option for 30 amp uh, that you'll commonly see is the L L530. Is it L5? Yeah, L530, which is 120 volt twist lock uh, connector. So, as you can see, my extension cord is an L530 and my adapter here is an L530 and you give that a little twist that doesn't come apart ever. So what I would like to do is I'd like to take out this TT30 and put in an L530 that way I can plug this extension cord, this lovely 30 amp extension cord, directly into here, give it a twist and I don't have to worry about falling out versus using this thing where again like just the, I don't know which way to plug this in, it's like just the weight of the cord here is like threatening to pull it out. Like, that ain't cool. So, I'm going to pop this panel off. I have an L530 outlet that I'm going to adapt into place. And so we all see how much this makes me swear and wish I never took on this project and just got a generator with an L530 outlet in it instead. But I didn't, so here we are. Alright, step one, get the panel off. Of course, you don't want to do this when the generator's running, but that should be obvious. give you a lot of extra wire from here. It's, it's a little bit tight. Alright, we are into the back of this, sort of. This is going to be a bit of an adventure trying to actually do this without cursing ourselves to death, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Now, needless to say, if you are at all uncomfortable with electrocuting yourself or setting yourself on fire, you probably shouldn't do this modification and you should just get the right, uh, you should get the right generator in the first place, which for some reason I had difficulty saying because it's Saturday and it's the first day of a uh, vacation for me. In my brain, I left that at work. But luckily I'm still partially here. And I'm actually going to take a peek under here to see if I can get a little more slack on these wires. I'll be right back. All right, I'm trying to get you in here so you can sort of see what's going on. Let me pull it off the uh, Pulling off the neutral here, and that's going to pop out there. That neutral also goes over to our 120 uh, 15 amp outlet. 
Actually, I guess it's a 20 amp outlet. But 15 and 20 both fit the same. 15 amp plugs that you're used to. Take the hot off here. That's our red wire. And then pop out our ground, which also goes over to the 15, 20 amp socket. So that frees up our wire, and they're actually doing a good job here. They put little uh, crimps on here so their wires don't fray all the bits. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, so that's our wires pulled off of our TT30. Now we have to see if I can do this without getting a wrench. There we go. Try not to block your view too much there. So this is held on with some nuts and bolts. So we'll just spin those off. Like so, and I will take the other three off and be back in a sec. Okay, so we have successfully extracted our uh, TT30 outlet. And as you see, it says for recreational vehicle use only, because this is this was not adopted by NEMA until like I don't know, 10 years ago or something. They just tried to pretend it didn't exist. So we're going to replace it with our L530, as we said. And as you'll notice, the L530 has a much smaller diameter. So if I were to stick that in here, you can see that? If I were to stick that in here, you know, there's like room to poke your finger or a screwdriver or whatever in the side there. You know, you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wall plate that I'm going to mount up behind there. I'm going to have to apparently cut off the top and bottom of that, which is fine. So I'm going to mount that wall plate in behind there so that I can then mount the, uh, the outlet to there. And then I will have, you know, a nice sort of brushed metal trim around my outlet. Yeah, um, there are a bunch of different sizes of these and some of them are like really hard to tell the difference. For a L530, you want a 1.6 inch uh, diameter. There are other ones, I think I have one here. Give me a sec. Yep, here it is. So this is the one I accidentally bought at first. This is a 1.405, so you can see 1.405, roughly speaking. This is actually the same diameter that the, or built for the same diameter that the um, you know, regular uh, 15 amp outlets are for. So if you have a box where you want to put like a single 15 amp, 120 volt or whatever, they'll come with a full circle instead of like the, having the flat tops on here and you'll put, put it in one of these. But uh, this does not fit the L530. You can see that's slightly larger. So this one, I tried to return it. They just gave me my money back and told me not to return it. So if I ever install a single outlet, I Whatever. Anyways, the one you want is the 1.6. So that is slightly larger. You can see it'd be much too large for like a single 50 amp. So I am going to do some measuring calipers here, figure out what the uh, bolt pattern is here. I'm going to transfer all that over to here and make sure I trim off the top and bottom so they're not sticking out. I can actually fit the panel back in. And uh, yeah, I will. Uh, come back when I start marking this out. All right, so this pattern here is what was it? It's 48 vertical, so 48, and for this reason, it's 50 horizontal. And so, what I need to do is I need to reproduce that pattern here. So this is 71, I want to say millimeter. You know give or take. Obviously it's a rough stamping so it's not going to be perfect, but, but 71 wide. So 71 minus 50 is equal to 21 divided by 2. That is going to be 10.5 in from the edge. So go down to 10 and we add 1 half. And then that's going to be our measurement in from the edge that we're going to strive. Once we put our, you know, top notch die come on here. Trying to turn our hands blue while we're doing this. 
eyeball that. Yeah, it's about in the right place, so it should be good. 10.5, we're going to lock that. And now we're just going to do a quick and dirty scribe. And yeah, I know I shouldn't do this with calipers, but I mean, these are $10 calipers, who cares? Move it on both sides. I think you can see that, possibly, if the reflection isn't too much. Trust me, it's in there. And do it over here. And now remember, these are only going to be clearance holes, so it's not a big deal. You have like a nut and bolt on the back side. Uh, so, anyways, time to do the height. That was going to be 48. And so this entire thing is, so that's going to be 115.4 in millimeters. So, 115.4 now unlock this again go to 40 48 which is right there double check our measurement you can see that is 48 about as close as I care for it to be check on this side I mean, I'm off by a little bit, but again, these are clearance holes. Go up to 50. Check this. This one's probably going to be off a little bit more because I fudge one of the numbers. Actually, that's pretty damn close. I am happy with that. So, luckily for me, this actually lands right in the inside of this curve on a flat spot. So, as soon as I get my punch and punch this in here, I should be able to drill through it relatively easily. Check what my clearance hole size is going to be on these nuts and bolts. They're probably an M something. These are M4, so a 4 millimeter drill, which I don't have. I'll use one of my number drills for that. We'll do just fine. So, I'm going to grab a few tools and we will drill some holes. Alright, so my decimal chart says a number 22 is going to be about uh, 5 thou under which is fine because these holes are probably going to get walled out a bit as I drill them freehand. And as we can see here, my number 22, assuming that's not completely blown out, is, you know, just a little bit under 4 millimeters. So this is going to be fine. I'm going to use that drill for it. I'm going to use my other one. Hmm. I might use my other drill. We'll see. Anyway, first things first. We want to go in and we want to punch these so that we're not drifting too far off. And again, don't have to be super accurate here. Just kind of want to, you know, get in the ballpark. This isn't highly precise machining. This is just bodging things together. Now, see on the Front side here, you can little dimples in there. Now this is stainless, and so it's gonna drill like a bitch. I might actually start with a smaller drill just to poke through it first. Uh, just because drilling like all four millimeters through at once might be a pain in the ass, so. Truck going by outside, ignore that. So I'll grab that drill and we will clamp this at the edge of my bench so it doesn't I'm going to drill holes in my bench and we'll, uh, we'll drill. Starting with 3.30 seconds here. In the right direction. And we'll see how this goes. Yeah, not that bad. Worked very well. Whew. Sulfur smell on that lube, tell you what. So, check to make sure I'm not about to drill through my table here. Nice. Do that two more times and we'll have our holes. All right, got our holes drilled. Basically hit our marks on there. Hopefully you can see that. And I uh, 
give it a quick chamfer. This isn't really the best chamfer bit, but it's what I got. So next thing I need to do is I need to chop off the ends of these, and I have a porta band I'm going to use for that, and hopefully that's not going to turn into a complete disaster. And then I will be able to also use a porta band to cut these off. And in fact, I might actually cut them off together. I'm not sure. So then I could just slice them once and be done with it. Might not be a worse idea. Anyways, the idea is I'm going to mount this in here with the uh, with the faceplate screws, and then this will, as a unit, go into there. So into there, just in case you're uh, not quite keeping up with things. And actually, while I'm thinking of it, match this up here, and you can't really probably see that that's matching up, but it is. You've got one, two, three, four holes all basically lined up perfectly. That's a good thing, I don't have to buy a second one of these. So, I'm going to grab a porta band and mark it where I want to cut this. And yeah, I think I'll cut them together probably. And then we'll see how much of a disaster, how much of a disaster that turns out to be. All right, it took a little bit of figuring to get the right uh, angle figured out for this. Uh, I sort of need to be able to see what I'm doing and also hold this steady and hopefully get a shot for the camera. <sighs> and if I had, you know, a middle cutting band saw that I could... That's going to run into that. God dang it. Uh, one sec. As I was saying, if I had a middle cutting band saw cable instead of just the port band, I would definitely be using that for this. Uh, I'm probably going to get like one of those stand up little swag off-road stands for this eventually, but I don't have one right now, so we work with what we got. So I'm sighting on the back side where I've drawn a line here, and luckily this isn't really crucial, but I'd like to get it basically down the line. God, that's an ugly cut, and loud too. Uh, so unfortunately the, uh, the big plate of the bandsaw was rubbing up against the outlet, and so this was just flapping the breeze, which is why it was terrifically loud. You know, it roughly did the job. The cut is terrible, but I will be able to give it a quick sanding, take the burrs off, and then just slice right through my sandpaper. Great. Um, yeah. It, you'll never see this part. It's fine. Encourage me and maybe make more sense to use a file for this. Yeah, just gonna clean up for a bit. All right, so that's both sides cut down. Luckily, these don't need to be straight lines. We'll just, you know, pretend that, uh, we'll pretend they're straighter than they ended up being. Um, but, I mean, this is all gonna be behind the panel, which is right here. So, as you can see, yeah, once it's behind here, it will sit exactly there and it will look flawless. I love it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put the nuts and bolts in here, but I'll bring you in for a closer look. All right, hopefully that view is not too bad. So, we want to get these nuts through there and get the bolts through the holes, get the nuts on the bolts. And then once this is done, we can Get the wires on the back side. And I need to make sure that that nut is actually underneath the. Uh, there we go. So the nut, the side of the nut was about to interfere with the, uh, with the body of the outlet, but we're fine now. This one, I think I have a little bit more room to spare. Possibly. Uh, actually, maybe not. I'll have to back that off and make sure the nut is below it. Which is fine, there's plenty of room underneath here. Fortunately, you can't really see that on the, uh, on the screen, but, you know, tight bores in here. If I could, like, actually pull this forward properly, I'd show you what's happening. But, I cannot. Woe is me. Alright, these ones are gonna have to come up from the bottom. So, 
trying to get in here without completely destroying everything I love. Hello, I'm going to go through. Okay, here we go. And I can't see a thing in here because it's too dark. Oh, there it is. I think I got it. I got it. Nice. All right. That's looking beautiful. And I just need one more. And this one shouldn't be too hard. Possibly. Come on. There we are. Get it on the nut. And we are home free. And I just want to make sure these are nicely lined up. Uh, basically looks fine to me. I'm the one that matters. It's my generator. So we get that stuck down. That's snug down. Yeah, this one's snug down. Hopefully that's not just spinning in the back. It is fine. Nice. Yeah, it's actually nicely, uh, nicely made. They used uh, uh, flared nuts on here with a little grippy texture and everything. So, ah, it goes in nice and easy. All right, so, I'm going to need the ground wire to go into the ground screw. All right, there we are. I backed out a little bit. So, you got two grounds. Let's unwind from there. So one of them is from the chassis, and the other one is going to the uh, 15 amp outlet. So, we'll slide those in there. And then, go ahead and reef down on those. And make sure that they are both nice and tight, and they are good. Slip the hot wire into the hot screw. So it's that demo good, read the hot screw. And make sure that is nice and tight. Now the tricky one is going to be to get the neutrals, choose a neutral screw. That's sort of tucked away in the back bottom here. So I might need to struggle with this for a minute, but we'll see. Right, feels like that one's in. And I'm kind of tempted to pull this one back out of the zip ties here. I think I can Squish the zip tie back a little bit. Let me see. Get a little bit more slack here. These are in slightly different places than they were before. And I'm going to have to cut that zip tie. I might. Hopefully, I can just bend this down. That one in, and then this one just slides right in nice and easy. I hope. Okay, yeah, those two are in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this down from the back side. I hope. Uh, let me grab this one. This is like the worst angle it could possibly be. blind on it. All right, don't need that screwdriver anymore. Make sure we're nice and tight on both of these. We're not going to pop out. 
and we have installed this. So I'm going to button this back up and I'll roll it outside and power it up and make sure that all our connections are good. So I'll do that and join you in a second. No need to panic. Garbage is a bit gummed up. There we have it. I now have a twist lock on my generator, which isn't going to unplug unless I twist it. So, let's see. there we go. Unless I twist it, so I can take this nice 10 gauge extension cord, plug whatever I want into it, and I don't have to worry about you know cook of the 20 amp circuit. I can get all 30 amps out of this uh, generator. So, hope you enjoy watching this video, and I will see you on the next one.